Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I am making a corn wreath, a corn husk wreath actually. Got very excited in the beginning there. I'm using a 14 inch wreath form from Dollar Tree. Just had one hanging around. Did not have these corn husk. Um, hmm. I knew these are sold to make tamales, but um, they had bugs in them, and some of them were kind of mildewy or something. I don't know what was going on, but I'll uh, get into them more later. And a stapler. And I used my hot glue gun to attach everything, and I used some ribbon to form a base for everything. My hands hurt, so that's nothing new. So when I got these, I read the reviews on Walmart because I was like, where can I buy these? Because it's actually going to get corn and then, like, shuck it, but... They already sell these in the Hispanic section of the grocery store. They had some that were like wrinkled like this. I didn't really like those. I liked the ones that were nice and straight. Um, yeah, I, I know you make tamales with them, but, and I know you're supposed to soak them, but that soaking doesn't get rid of like moldy stuff. I threw those away. I think I had a bunch. This is my second pack that I bought because I tried to dye the first ones and that wasn't working. It's just, it's weird. Every time I've had homemade tamales, we really only have deer tamales. When someone kills a deer and makes tamales with them, but they're always in the papers, not in these corn husks. What I'm doing is just stripping them down because they're really big. They were surprisingly wide. I don't know what kind of giant corn they're, they're coming from, but they were really big. Stripping it down into sections that are maybe two inches at the top and come down to a point, folding it in half, folding in the long section, and stapling it down. I used white glue for this. I used a glue stick. I used a glue gun. The stapler worked better for me. And if I was doing this again, I would probably soak these for a little while because when they were more moist, they were more pliable. And then I would just use a stapler, because I was going to try to soak them and then glue them, but I was like, how is the glue going to stick to that? But the stapler ended up working so much better. It was a little bit hard on my hands, but not as hard as trying to squeeze a bottle of glue. So now I've attached some ribbon to the inside of the frame, and I'm just going to go around and wrap it. I don't actually have enough ribbon in this roll from Dollar Tree to wrap the whole thing, but I just need something to glue to. That's not the bare wires. I think if you space this out a little better than I did, you probably could get by with one roll. I mean, I got by with one roll and it all wasn't covered, but it was fine. So I'm just going around. There I'm gluing it off. So you can see, you know, three quarters of it is covered. Now I'm taking all my little loops that I made. I guess they're loops. I'm putting them fold side down. The fold where there's the V. You can see in the upper left hand corner that that one that I just picked up has the V in it. I'm putting that down. And I'm just gluing it along. I guess you could put the V up. But you're not really going to see it either way because I think later on, like, one of them's really wrinkly, so I just kind of flip it over and you can't see it because there's stuff glued on top of it. So, up, down, it doesn't matter. I just, I like to be consistent with things. And I'm just kind of going along. These were very, very dry. I don't know... I mean, if you live somewhere where it was extra dry, I think working with these would be even more complicated than it was for me. Like, we're very humid here, so I'm sure they were more pliable than they would be somewhere like, I don't know, like Arizona. Isn't Arizona super dry? I don't know. I haven't been to Arizona in like 30-something years. So I'm doing three, and then I did four, and then I did three, and I was trying to work out a pattern like... I usually do when I'm doing a wreath that has real repetitive things on it, like do three across and then do two and then fill back in with three and go back to two. But this ended up just being, they're all kind of different sizes. Let's just get them on there. And I was just trying to remain consistent with how far away the top of the loops are from each other. 
and you just keep going until the whole thing is covered. I actually took this in my office and I sat down with a movie and I glued it because the amount of time I edited out of this where I was just holding hot glue and waiting for it to cool, it was ridiculous. It was just, it was just so long and I was like, uh, no, I'm not gonna sit here and glue this whole thing when I could be sitting in a nice comfortable chair with a beverage in a movie and just glue all these things on and come back and finish it on camera. So that's what I did. And that's what I do for most of my videos where I'm doing something ridiculously repetitive over and over again. So when you get back to where you started, I put some glue on each little loop and then I shoved it down as far as it would go. And now I'm calling my sister for some reason. This must have been very early in the morning because I usually call her very early in the morning. Now I'm trying to call her again. Okay. So you just go back in with everything and fill it in. If there are some spaces that look a little oddly spaced, you can go in and just stick another piece of husk in there and that's kind of it. That side where my, the right hand side, it got a little wobbly, but I went back and just kind of nudged some things around. You might have to do that when you're done because every one of these is not the exact same size. They're not the same shape. Now I'm taking a little piece of wire and kind of bending it into a bobby pin shape and then turning the edges up. I'm looking for my, my good side. And I'm going to put some glue down and what I'm trying to do is stick that little hook in there and put the little bent edges underneath one of the wires of the frame, which I kind of do, but it didn't feel super secure, even though this really like, weighs like nothing. It basically weighs the amount the frame weighs. And then I just put a little husk to cover that up and that was it. You can dye these with RIT. That was more trouble than it was worth for me. I tried doing them with some watercolor paint, some food dye, but and I'm showing you here how they're very, they won't, they won't break immediately, but they're very, uh, very crunchy. So indoor wreath, definitely. I mean, if they mold inside the bag, they're definitely going to mold on your porch. So that's it. I hope you guys like that. I kind of like it. Very, very simple, very understated. All right, so that's it for today's video. I am gonna see you guys on Friday with something spooky. I mean, really spooky, not too spooky, don't worry. Uh, follow me on Instagram, subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.